Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gonna talk, we gonna have fun. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not, not even on my dad walk on. Man, hold up. I can't never get used to that. It's been 20 years. I still ain't figured that out. Mm. That's Man. A lie. You know no, what I said. No, I, I really don't. I, I try to play like I do. I understand the other people look better than you. What? You, no, you don't. <laughs> We got a lot of family in this thing, man. It's been 20 years. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's a long time, ain't it, man? <laughs> that boy, like, I'm, I'm in the army, nigga. You know? So, check it, man. We got a very yeah. special guest today in the house, man. We got Mr. Antoine Bradley and Miss Amber McMahon. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. You hear him, man. We in the <laughs> building, man. So, how's it going? Hey, man. Good to be here. Good to be here. Like you said. Man. It's blessing. Definitely a blessing, man. So, I mean, you know, uh, we wanted to do a show, man, something, you know, different than what we usually mm -hmm. do, man. Um, we want, first of all, I want to say thank you guys for your service, thank you, you know. You. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, man. I mean, every time I see one, that's all I can do is just thank them because, man, it, it take a different type of person to commit to something like you guys have committed to. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I just appreciate you guys. And believe me, you know, you guys, uh, I, I, my daughter being in the military, and I told her not to go. I told her, I said, don't you go in that military. You don't need to be in that military. <laughs> and I'll be darned if she went right to the military. I should have told her to go to the military. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> she, flipped, she flipped it all away on me, mm -hmm. didn't she? So, guys, man, uh, just I, I, I want to go one at a time, yes. right? So, Amber, I want us to just... Uh, Let's let's talk about you know how you even got into the military. No, uh, go back before. Oh, you want to go sure, back? I'm sure when you was a little child growing up, you didn't want to always do this, did That's, you? Yes, yeah, she did. Uh, not necessarily military in general. Okay, you know, I was all over the place. I wanted to be a OBGYN, and mm -hmm. I wanted to be something else and something else. I was all over. You know, we in the country, so we not really exposed. When you say to country, where where exactly are you from? Southampton County, Virginia. Okay, hey. yeah. I love your accent. Thank you. I love Thank it. You. Does everybody in Virginia sound like you? Most most of us do. Most of us <laughs> He's do. like, nah. Some talk real fast. Some talk real slow. I'm right in the middle. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. You sound real country. Well, thank like you. Like you can sing a country song. Did can you, you sing? No. No. <laughs> so, no. I ain't gonna tell nobody I can't anyway. <laughs> but so so how was it coming up? Uh, it was fun. You know, it's one of them things where being in Southampton County, it's a lot of history there. It's a lot of history there. If you haven't heard of it, you know, uh, that's where Nat Turner did his rebellion and stuff mm -hmm. at. So a lot of those roots are still there. Wow. However, you know, just growing up in that area, knowing everybody, especially being mixed race, you kind of feel a lot of racism in not outright necessarily, okay. but and like I said, the roots of it is still there. Okay. So it's a lot of stuff that you won't really realize until you get older mm -hmm. and you learn and you kind of experience life. It's a lot of stuff I didn't realize I went through until I was like, you know, in my 20s, well into the Army in Texas. I was like, dang, I really did experience some stuff, I mm -hmm. guess. You know, it's just stuff that don't really click. You just mm -hmm. used to it. You know, that's that's your way of life. That's how you grew up. So you grew up with a um, black mom. Um, white dad or vice yes. versa? Which one? I got it right the first yeah, time. Yeah, you did. You <laughs> did. Okay, you did. And they were both there in the household with you. Uh, separate households. Separate. Ho separate households. Okay, so your dad wasn't there. Your mom was there. Right. Okay. How right. was that growing up like that? Oh man, I mean, you had the black household and you had the white household. You had the black life and you had the white life. So, and a lot of I'm sure people with mixed race that grew up mixed race can mm -hmm. can attest to. We got that switch. We can turn on and off to kind of go. If I'm around white people. I got a, well, I used to have a switch I could turn on because, you know, that's what was expected of me. Right. You know, and then when I, when I was around my black family, which I lived with, I grew up with, that's how I was raised. If you ask me, I got that. That's just me, mm -hmm. you know. That's so, easy. It, yes, yes. So the older I got, and depending on who I was talking to, is when I realized I had that switch. I could turn it on and off. But some people would say that they felt like um, they didn't fit in in either world because in the black side, they're like, well, you too light. You you don't look like us. But then the white side, you're not white enough. Yeah. So you know you look felt at my like nose. Look at my nose. It's always in the country. They always say, it's by your nose, by your nose. And I'm just like, what about everything else? <laughs> <laughs> you know. I love it. The fact that you know, uh, yeah, you y'all both white. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> See, whatever, so whatever. You, it's, and that's another thing. So a lot of people like to put a, a label on it. You know, right? Like. So it's a lot of people that are mixed that only identify with one. Some identify with both. Me, myself, I was raised 
by a black woman. I came out of a black woman. All of my documents, black. Mm -hmm. No other thing. So if you ask me what I am, I was raised to say, I'm black. Right. So that's what I identify as. That's, <laughs> that's, that's you know, that's All how, the way that's how I, Brown that's that. how I carry <laughs> myself. <laughs> that's how I carry myself, but I don't ignore the other half of me. You know, right. I don't ignore my other roots. You know, mm -hmm. I know where I came from, good, bad, ugly, and all that stuff. And I just mm -hmm. kind of embrace it all and make the best of it. You yeah. know, I eat, am who I am. Eat a lot exactly. of tuna casserole. No, tuna. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was, I was fortunate enough to be in a household where both of them could cook. <laughs> no, it's dope, man, to be able to. I, I mean, you know, I come from a home where my parents didn't stay together as well. Mm -hmm. So it don't just matter. It really, color or not, you know, there's things that... Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, people go their separate ways, man. And you have to be, as a child, ripped from mm -hmm. one household to the next. I, I wrote about that, remember? Mm -hmm. uh, being transferred from one one house to the next. Both of the parents talking about one another. Mm -hmm. All type of stuff. You know, this is what kids go, to, go through to this day. Like, mm -hmm. this is stuff that, this is called really... I know y'all don't want to hear it, but it's generational curses, man, where when you start to develop this in that way, then your ki your kids get used to giving up easy on things. They're used to not having both parents. So you implant that. It becomes that. a norm. Yeah, it yeah. becomes something that's acceptable, you know? Yeah. So I, and, and I know because, uh, you know, it was hard for me starting out in a way to where I couldn't figure it out, you know? So, I mean, my dad was somewhat of a player, you know? So he manipulated <laughs> the ladies, you know. We had a lot of plates coming to the house. You know what I'm saying? They pull up, they drop them off, one car, one day, the next day, another car. You know, she has, yeah, he in the house, yeah, I'm going to try a piece of this chicken. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then they was bringing mixtapes by the house, you know, the little cassettes. You know, they drop them off for him. He liked music. Yeah, but it was me and my pops, man. And, you know, we just, you seen the letters. Mm. It was letters after he passed. I went and opened up the house, and I had letters from we all kind of women. We read a lot Love of letters, letters baby. Man. Yeah, so I'm just telling you. Back in the days, that's what they did at Rome. Yeah. They didn't yeah. have no phone to be texting mm -hmm. back and forth. So I all still that got evidence. those letters, too. I even got letters from my mom to my dad, and they both were broke up for years. He kept yeah. everything. So, you know, the thing I say is, man, when they when when you go through that and you, you, you start believing that's just the way it is. So when I started off early, you start off thinking that's the way you is. You play the woman. You know, I wasn't used to know, oh, I'm going to be with her. No, no, we for to go out tonight, and she ain't going, and... I'm gonna be in this town, and we going, and it, that's the way yeah. you think. So, right. Mm -hmm. right. That, yeah. because it's established in that way, because you think that's the way it go down. Mm -hmm. But you're being taught that, right? Right. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to have step parents on both sides. Okay. That was there from a very, very young age. So, you know, all my my step siblings, my step parents, they mama and daddy. You know, I got I got ma, and then I got mama. I got dad, and I got daddy. You mm -hmm. know, they okay. they distinguish the difference, and then. Siblings been there. We all was raised together, you know, since I was just a few months old. How many siblings do you have? Ten and all. Ten. Man, Ten. that's a trial. Wow, you have a huge family. Yeah, yeah we was all that's spread big. out. That's big. Wow. wow. I fall right in the middle. But, okay, because I have, um, because my white side is like great-great-grandfather. They ain't that you know, great. So, no, they so right there. It's back they there. Right there. <laughs> but, but I know of other family members who are like, it's their grandparents, right. so to say. But on the white side, when you have grandparents who are um, so strict on certain things, like mm -hmm. they didn't want their daughter to date a black person and so right. forth. But then when the baby came in place, you know, yeah, you know, they fought a little bit, but eventually they came around. But did you ever have to face where the older generation didn't accept you at first? Uh, not me necessarily, or at least not, because like you said, they, they grew to love me. Mm -hmm. You know, I just I just get it from stories. Okay. Uh, per se, you know, the the struggles on, uh, you know, such and such didn't accept such and such for a long time, and then kind of got all these arguments, all these discussions, and they came around. And when I came around, I was like, oh, she's here, you know. I was like the the kind of the butter that that melted everybody together, right, you know. Right. So uh, that was a blessing for me to kind of hear the stories and and whatnot, and kind of be the the thing that that broke that animosity up. That's you one know. thing I love about children. Children have that power. When adults right. don't have that power yes. to really merge people, mm -hmm. you know, kids have that power. Absolutely. Wow. You know, it's just, you know, dope to uh, hear that, you know, you ain't too different than me, even though you got the uniform on, you know, I'm still, <laughs> oh, I no. mean, well, I'm only human, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 
I want to talk to my guy, man. But, the guy. On, no, uh, I want to go. Uh, uh-uh, uh, uh-uh, I want to go to my that. guy. No. He's sitting here waiting out for to bring him okay, in. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> this go guy, ahead. Antoine Bradley, is in the building. This is my guy, man. Just just meeting him. Just having the, the testosterone. You know, just being here with my guy, man. <laughs> it feels good, man. You know, uh, brother, tell us about you, man. Let, let us know. So, yeah. Where I'm you a, from? Where everything. you from? I'm a little bit older than her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a little bit, but um, originally I'm from uh, Georgia. Uh, okay. Town Brunswick. Okay. okay. Um, I'm down from them parts down there. Uh I come from a military family, so I'm like... That's all you wanted to be? Somewhere around third, fourth generation. It was more so... So it was expected of you? No. No? No. They were actually... I actually had opportunities to go to school right out of high school, um, play football and all that So you played stuff. football in high school coming yes. up, and you were good. But let's talk about I, before that. I was Take decent. him back. <laughs> Take him all the way back. Okay. Well, you start going up to that school and all that. What about when you? How was you? Was your parents together? And and re- so no, no, nah, no. Nah, my okay. parents, uh, my parents divorced, and then my stepdad came in, and you know that's my, my pops, my dude. So your, your mom, mom and dad yeah. was military, or just your- so. My dad was military. My stepdad was military. Okay, they were just in two different ways. My dad was uh, in the Navy. My stepdad was in the Marines. Ah. But your mom was in the military. My mom was in the military. She was like, nah, she, she, she just got used to the military life. She's she like, I'm just going. Finance. She did finances and, finances. And, and money counting and all that good stuff. Okay, okay. And so you being one that was bad, because you was bad as hell in the middle school. I know you was. <laughs> you was I can looking. look at you and tell. Yes, he's a big you comedian. A, yeah, he was not a good kid in the middle school. I she had to go up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, kept, I found a way to keep things exciting for everybody <laughs> and dope. entertain. I mean, I still graduated with a 3.5 GPA, hey, so I was good. You did your thing. Dude, just, you know, that, don't mean that don't mean nothing. I'm not, child? I got I am one not the oldest child. I am actually in the middle. The middle child. I have an older sister and a stepsister, both older than me. I have an older, I have two younger sisters, one that, a stepsister and a sister that's younger than so you're me. You're the only boy. I'm the only boy. Mm. That boy spoiled. God, I, I knew it right there. There it is, right there. Boy, that boy got away with a lot of stuff. That's why he was bad up there, but he got them grades. So that's how he smoothed things over. Get the grades and you're good. You know what I'm saying? Like, but. Hey, as long as your mark's good, you good. Yeah, my daughter do that to me. Now I hate it. She makes straight A's and she just kind of do, got to, just does what she want to do in 11th grade. Just, yeah, whatever. But, and then when I try to bring it up, she, I do, I take care of my business. I'm, this is real. I yeah. got this, daddy. I got yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> and I just kind of leave her alone because I'm like, it's working, you know, but, um, so when you came up, you know, did you have to go see your father and stuff and then go back over here? Did you have to do a lot of traveling? So me and my, me and my biological had a strange relationship for okay. a while. You know, we, uh, we didn't have that kind of interaction for a while because he came out to Texas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we were still in Georgia. In Georgia. Um, so we would see him and talk to him periodically. Okay. You know, so you didn't come out and visit or nothing? Nah. We came out one you didn't time, want but my to? aunt was out here. My aunt was out here, okay. so we came out here to visit, and that's when we saw him. But he had a lot of other stuff going, going on, on that uh that we weren't able to come out and visit like oh that. okay okay wow and so that, that i mean that that's dope man that 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 you you have now did you you ever had it you had issues with him about that too though you had to have some issues men have issues with their daddy so don't try to play me because oh, i had, I, I, I had I issues it, with mine i keep it for uh, real yeah okay, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. we uh we, we had some points out there that's I got right older where we threw hands i told you oh, i knew wow it because okay. it happens it was, you know, it was one of them things where, you know, he had been out of my life for so for a certain period, and when he came back, you know, wanting trying to, play to be daddy, daddy bro. I'm like, bro, it's too, it's too late. late. Uh huh. It's too late. I'm, I'm. Hey, by the time I had done left, went off to basic training, came back, was getting ready for my first deployment and all that good stuff. So by that time, I'm like, bro, it's. Do you have a good I'm relationship now? That. Oh, we got a wonderful relationship now. Which what is, mended uh, it? So we ended up talking and some of the things that I've dealt with in life and uh, we uh, go back and forth with a lot of it um, and come to find out we dealt with a, we deal with a lot of the same things. So it's just, you know, we started harvesting our relationship from there. But then it was a big thing for my grandfather that me and him mended our relationship because, you know, my grandfather was my superhero growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, so And since all of you were military or are military coming down, they understood certain things could have been there, done that, and you were... 
just now going through it. Pretty much. That's how it all went down. And then um, my grandfather made it a big deal about me and him having a relationship. Mm -hmm. And for me, if my granddaddy said it, it was it was the gospel. You truth. Had to. It is what it is. Because I spent I spent a lot of time with my grandparents growing up. So, and they were you know, in Georgia. In Georgia. Yes. OK. So I was always with them. If you saw my granddaddy, I was probably somewhere in the immediate vicinity. So how old were you when you mended that relationship with your dad? Probably about 28. 29. Wow. So we just within the last uh, seven, eight years. And do you see, because it took you so long, did that affect your life with your kids or with your child? I make it to where now it's just like, you know, I want to make sure that I'm always there for mine. Okay. That's that's the biggest thing. I, I Regardless of what happens in any other way, form, or fashion, that at the end of the day, she's going to always be able to say, Daddy was here. Mm -hmm. You know, we did the fault. She said, Daddy, we, we going to the daddy-daughter dance. Yes, we are. <laughs> I was tired, but we went, you know, so I make sure that, you know, I keep that interaction with my daughter. Um, you only have you know, one. So I have a daughter and I have a son. My son's in Georgia with his okay. dad, my stepson. He, uh, but that joker talked to me every day. I get a text from him in the morning. Hey, dad, what you doing? Oh. Ain't you supposed to be in school? Yeah, because what happens a lot of times is you sometimes tend to over uh, compensate when it comes down to, you know, yeah. uh, going through situations like that. So, I mean, you know. Um, you get it together somewhere, you know, mine, it was God, you know, pretty much, uh, there's a scripture that says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And Amen. I really believe that. Like, like I, when I read that scripture, I believed I had a second chance. So that helped me to not have to be the person that I grew up seeing and being. So, and I think that was one of the most, uh, uh, one of the most uh, transforming times in my life, you know what I mean, where mm -hmm. I met, where I had a metamorphic change, and I was able to uh, get it get it somewhat right. I didn't become perfect, of course, but I started to work on my character and try to change who I grew up being and what I grew up seeing. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to do. So, I mean, there's no perfect parenting. There's no book to parenting, and and there's no. I mean, that go for our parents too. Yeah. So there's a lot of forgiving that have to be done, and I think a lot of times. We, we, we just take things to heart as, as kids. We don't know how to forgive when we become that kid again once we see that person and mm -hmm. what they've done to us. And that unforgiveness just stems all the way back down to where it first happened at. Yeah. And sometimes so. that's why I ask you, how do you, um, how is it with your children? Because sometimes we unknowingly branch that same thing off into our children, mm -hmm. whether we do it by overcompensating with what we lacked when we were younger and tend to not do the things that they really need you know what i mean that's right. what you lacked but i don't mean that that's what they're lacking mm -hmm. and, and let me just say this man you know because y'all didn't think y'all didn't know what y'all was coming into <laughs> y'all thought y'all would come over and talk about the army and all of that but let me tell you something about this show it's really to help people so you bring them to a common place where they can see you know that y'all are human first of all because right. sometimes we start telling our story and we don't give people the real true essence of what you had to go through to get to where you are now. Right. right. So that's the part that helps the people. And so a lot of times people paint these different pictures that are not attainable because you can tell somebody to jump, but they won't know how to do it unless you teach them how to jump. Right. So that's the whole game, man. Just just giving people to lay out. Hey, man, I'm human. I came from this. And you to say, hey, man, uh, Amber, like, hey, I came from a place where I was, uh, you know, I had a white uh, father. I had a black mother. You know, there's a lot of people out there that go through that. You know what I mean? And I think that the mixed race, to be honest, which is is bridging gaps when it comes to mm -hmm. racial yeah. uh, barriers. barriers. So I, I thought that as a kid, I knew that that was going to be something. And you know, for you to come <clears throat> from a family where it was military, but your dad was in the army too, right? My dad was in the navy. In the navy. Your dad was in the navy. Yeah. Your, your, okay, your stepdad Stop. was Marine. in the Marines. Marines, and you just didn't do n neither one of them. Well, if you go all the way back generational wise, so we've been. My family's been in every branch. What was your daddy? I mean, your granddaddy. Granddad, my grandfather was. He did thirty-two army. years in the navy. In the navy. Wow. So your dad did what your dad And your great granddaddy, did. let me see if you can go back further. And my great granddaddy? Yeah. He didn't serve. He was a railroad railroad worker. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he came under that oh, time. Which is funny because it was over in the Southampton County area. <laughs> well, you know, you got Andrew Corn. I, I got family from up in that area as well. But that's good that you know your generation. A lot of people don't know anything about their great granddaddy or nothing like well, that. Well you don't so want to go good. back too far because when you do you start going down that rabbit hole of uh 
mental illness and, and, and all kind of stuff. And I think that's something that as a, as, as a person of color, I think a lot of times we denote that a lot too much because yes. there are things that are in our genes and genetics and things that we, you fear things because of some of the things that was passed down to you. And I don't think people take that serious enough. You know, there was no reparations or anything. But don't you think you have people, to know, you know some of these things to be able to try to correct it? I don't like think, if you know what your great granddaddy went through and yeah, it but passed you down, going, you know what I mean? I mean for me, so for me, looking at it from the standpoint, like my grandfather did 32 years in the Navy at a time where a person of color, you was only getting one or two jobs. You mm -hmm. was cooking, cooking. Mm -hmm. or you was moving boxes. That right. was it. That was the job you was getting. So for me, knowing that the struggle he had to go through to get to the positions he, were able to, he was able to find himself in was a motivating factor for me once I got into the military because it became a thing of, yo, I can't get caught slipping because of what was done with this same name before I got here. Right. Okay. So me, that's what it turned into. Let, with me, that. let me turn the page a little bit. Uh, Amber, I want to know about that day when you decided I'm going to join the army. And like, how old were you? Yeah. Like I want to know what, what, what gave you the audacity to say I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> or who convinced you to do it? Nobody really convinced me. My dad was in the army, um, but he never really talked about it a whole lot. Uh, he was, he was artillery. He was in desert storm. Um, but that was one thing he would mention it and that would be about it. Mm -hmm. Um, but what I, I honestly don't know. It was just, it was, it was there. We didn't really have any recruiters in our school cause we were so far out there away from everything. I think the nearest recruiting station was about an hour away. Um, but, I, you know, I was class president, president of all, you know, my FBLA, future business leaders of America. Like that was me. Mm -hmm. I always had like that business, that CEO entrepreneur mindset, but for some reason, you know, that dream college that I wanted to go to, I didn't get accepted into. Mm. I got accepted in all the other ones, but not that one. And, and was, you wasn't going to settle for nothing less than just going to that one. I could have made it. I had another plan. I was like, I won't be able to straight shine it this way, but I can go this way. Mm -hmm. um, and I was going to, you know, do the Army Reserves, you know, keep working, do all this other stuff, uh, fix what they needed me to fix so I could get in there the next year. And my mom was just kind of like, you know, I am, but I support you or whatever you do, but I think you're going to go a different way, mm. but I ain't going to put my, put it out there. Cause I want you to make your own decision. Exactly. And I, and I appreciate my mama for doing that. You know, she always had my back as long as it was a plan that made sense. She had my back. Mm -hmm. And, um, but she was like, you know, if you're going to do it, I support you. I'm here to help. Um, but if you don't, I'm here to help too, whatever you decide. And I went to MEPS, our military entry processing station in Fort Lee, Virginia. And I, was in a chair and I had this whole big, big elaborate plan that I was gonna do. And uh, I felt like God kind of pushed me and was like, I was like, let me see what you got for active duty. And no lie, they, they gave me a list. It's like, this is what we got for active duty. And I picked one and that's what it was. I called my mom, said, Ma, I'm, I'm going, I'm leaving on this day. I'm full time now. She was like, I knew it. Well, but why the Army and not the Navy, Marines, or anything else? So growing up, my stepdad, uh, who was a black man in, in Virginia, mm -hmm. born and raised and everything. Um, he was actually my, my seafood. So he has his own dojo mm. in Wakefield, Virginia. Oh, you, oh, you got some. Yeah, she, she can throw down. <laughs> yeah, she's a uh, yeah. karate kid. He, oh, he, right. yeah. Yeah. I started to grab you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> when I met you, I started to bow you, but then I said, some said, don't do it. You know, don't, don't, don't grab that woman like that. Uh, yeah. So from a from a very young age, from about three or four, he already had me kicking and punching and stuff. So that that discipline was already there because I've literally been doing kung fu since I was a baby. Mm -hmm. So black belt, you know, Sifu under him as assistant instructor and stuff like that. It's been there. So when I thought military, I originally went to the Marines. Mm -hmm. So my parents went in, signed a parental consent and everything I needed. I was supposed to be gone, you know, supposed to be a pulley and everything like that. And, you know, my mom was like, before she goes anywhere, I want her to talk to all the other branches first. Okay. And in my head, the only other option I gave myself was the was army. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, if I go military, I'm going to go all the way. Because I had the same mindset as all the other kids, you know, Marine and, and Army, mm -hmm. you know. I've seen Are those the two the best? Oh, because the movies. I've seen, I seen the movies. If I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. I had that. I had that mindset, <laughs> and a lot of and a lot of people, not just kids, a lot of people do, which mm -hmm. is actually a downfall because everybody ain't about that life. See, my cousin, my cousin went to the Navy. Yeah, straight out. Yeah. Well, and also in my area, there was no Navy recruiters. It was okay. only Marine and Army. Mm -hmm. Air Force was kind of there, but they ain't never had work, so mm -hmm. <laughs> they weren't in. Um, so I went from the Marine office to the Army office, and 
just the the energy was kind of different. You know, I felt like I belonged. You know, okay. they broke everything down a little bit better. You know, I got to pick my job. I got to do all kinds of stuff because that was still an option, you know, 10 years ago when I joined. And um, that next week, I was raising my right hand to join the Army. Well, it was just that just kind of happened. You See, know? when I think about people who join the Army, I'm thinking about either troubled kids who parents can't deal with them like you know what you gonna get out of here you something <laughs> people always have the illusion to say that the army gonna straighten you out mm -hmm. so you need to go and they gonna straighten you out because i can't deal with you so that's where you need to go or people who um parents were military or and they it just came down in generation so right. you're gonna go it's expected of you so that's who i always feel like those yeah. are the people who join now mm -hmm. I, I did my research I, I knew who could give me what and the benefits and everything else so i went because one, I knew I would enjoy it. Whatever mm -hmm. I did, I knew I could do it because I, I had that 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 mindset and that foundation in me already. It wasn't a really big change of life for me, you know, taking taking direction and stuff like that. I already had it, you know. That's how my my folks ran the house. That was good, you know. You tell me what to do, I'm gonna do it right then. I, <laughs> you mm -hmm. don't you don't mess around with mom tell you to do something. Hey. <laughs> you don't take your time. You no. get it done right then. So you had the right mom. That was yeah. That was that was easy for me. Um, now, as far as, you know, picking jobs and stuff like that, uh, I didn't know I would get to do it, but that was just a perk for me that, mm -hmm. I, that I got to pick what I did. Now, I wish I did a little more research on my job, but I love my job. What did you pick? Did you pick? You didn't pick this as soon as you went in. No, no, no. What no, did no. You, you have to work your way to get over there. Yeah, you yeah, 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 I don't work to get here. I know that. What did you pick when you first went in? I was a Patriot missile operator. I was artillery. Don't you supposed to say petty something? Nuh -uh. Oh, you? That's that's Navy. Uh, that's Navy. That's Navy Patriot. ranks you doing right there. She was. That's, that's was totally all, different. All the way on the Antoine Fisher movie <laughs> right here. Hey, see, there he goes. Go to the Antoine Fisher. I told you it was coming. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But no, Patriot missile operator. That it's, sounds it's, cool though. It's, it is. It For is a person pretty cool. Who knows nothing? I'm like, ooh, that's not like a And cool honestly, job. how they how they broke it down. They said you could be logistics, you can be a laundry specialist, and yes, we have a job in the army where you can wash clothes, you can wash <laughs> bed sheets, and you get paid the same amount as we do. Yeah. You know, easy job. Kicking down doors and taking names, they could be washing clothes and making the same amount of money. Wow. I ain't lying. Wow. But and they they gave me that one. That was my second option. Third option, they said fourteen tango. I said, what's that? They said you blow stuff up. I want that. One. I'm like, I was just like, I want that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know, how I'm fun. No thought, no research. Give me that one. You know, knowing. So if it, you had done research, you wouldn't have taken that one? Um, no. Why? Only because logistics gives you a lot more certifications and stuff. Um, but I appreciate my job. I loved my job when I had it. As a 14 yeah. Tango, I absolutely loved it. I always say everything happens for a reason. I chose that job for a reason. I was put in those places for a reason. You know, I was good at what I did. Mm -hmm. I was very good. I enjoyed good at it. blowing very, up stuff. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's one of those jobs that, that we have that fall into that excitement category. Because some people just come in, like, I don't really care about certifications. I just want to have fun, you mm -hmm. know. And the, the foundation of it all is the same. You might not necessarily get certifications that flip over to the civilian side. You'll have some, but not, like, running a warehouse. So you don't have like anybody who sits down with you and, like, like counsel you on, okay, this is why you should pick this or this is why you should pick I that. I didn't and then. We do that that's now. That's what we do now. We now. do that now. Yes, we do that now. Then, and especially because I made an on-the-spot change, and it was like, go, 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 go. One thing at MEPS, um, that entry process stage, you have all branches trying to join. You got hundreds of people trying to push through at one time. So they don't really have time to necessarily sit there for an hour and be like, okay, this job does this, that job does that, this job does this, pros and cons, unless you don't make a decision. It's like, here you go. You got to hurry up. But if I did it in the recruiting office with my recruiter, that's where they lay everything out. This job can give you this. You can go to these places. The likelihood of deployment is this. You know, these are the certifications to go along with it. We really break everything down. And that's where you having the control to pick your job means everything, you know, versus joining a branch and just kind of getting thrown into something <laughs> or picking a branch and not knowing specifically what you're going to do in that job. With the Army, you pick exactly what you're going to do. Wow. You know, the 14 series is the Air Defense Artillery series, but I knew I was going to be working on the missile launcher specifically. I was, I was maintaining and operating that missile launcher. I wasn't in the engagement control system. I wasn't in the, the battery control point. I wasn't in any of that. I knew exactly the piece of equipment I was going to do. I knew what I was going to do. That's what, I, that's what I picked, and that's what I did. So how long were you in that role? Nine years. Nine years. Wow. How long have you been in the military? Ten. Oh, so oh, you, you come just, up, you just you come up out that thing about a year ago. I, yeah, I got children and stuff. So. Hey. <laughs> So oh. how many children do you have? Two. If you know, okay, two, two boys. Okay, that's, mm -hmm. I just want to get it so for the record. So you have the boys and he has the girl. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got a girl in the bar, but I, I want to I wanna go back to my guy here, man, Antoine. Um, <laughs> yeah, he want to say Antoine think, Fisher so bad. He, he no. keep going that yeah. direction. Yeah. Yeah. Just go ahead and get it out. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. But I just want to say, man, thank you again for your contribution to this country. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> That's, 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 that's for you and Antoine. <laughs> 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 all the Antoines around the world serving in the military. You know, it's he serious. Out all, all of us. I mean, it, he did a good job portraying you guys because now every one of the Antoines is definitely up top now. Yeah, we, in so, my we, eyes. You know, every now and then you got to get a, <laughs> get a little, little something going so, on. So how was it for you? Like, I know your family, you know, they came up in a time where you seen these guys had joined and, and you knew you was going to do that. But, I mean, he said he didn't know. Cause well, he said he had other options as you know as, football. Yeah, he could have football. I had, I, had, I had a couple other options. Yeah, but table, still, so. you know, you you know where you had to go. Okay, you know, did you? Uh, let me ask something. <laughs> did you ever go to Fort Riley? I was stationed in Fort Riley. Let's get it, uh, man. Let's get. It. I knew we had this connection. 2011. <laughs> I can feel it. I just <laughs> left it. over there in old Fort Riley, Kansas. Yeah, Junction I was. I've been City, there, man. 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 Loved it. Wichita, right there up the street, right down the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we got some going here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, what, what was what was what did you come into the military? So doing? my path was totally different. Washing clothes, wasn't you, big dog? No, <laughs> no, no, no. Your boy, your boy came in. So my path was a little bit different because. I didn't come in the army first. I went in the Marines. Yeah, you did say that. So, but I uh, so I went to do. I did a couple of school visits and everything else. Um, the last school I went to visit was uh, actually Morehouse. Okay. Because um, I had an opportunity to looking at a ROTC scholarship there as well as they was looking giving me an opportunity to possibly play football as well. Because um, in my mind, I was the typical high school athlete. Mm -hmm. I knew I was gonna keep going to the next level and keep going to the next level. Um, after my visit to Morehouse, I was like, yeah, I don't know about the college stuff. Y'all actually want me to pay attention in classes yeah. and everything else because in high school, everything came so easy to me in, in school that half the time I would be sleeping in class. I would be, if it was somebody starting something in the class, I probably was somewhere associated with that. I knew I could just <laughs> that. Because I get bored. Yeah. I get bored, you know, and, and that was even with some of my AB, my advanced placement classes and stuff like that. I just caught on to stuff. They weren't but, challenging you. Enough. So, yeah, it didn't feel like it was really challenging mm -hmm. me. So it was just like, hey, you got to go to college. Well, during my visit at Morehouse, I was able to go around with a couple of the students there and they were kind of showing me some of the stuff they do. And they were talking about how they got to study and all that stuff. And I'm like, study? What's that? <laughs> no, nah, I'm good. That's not for me. So I came back home. Because this was actually during National Signing Day, because that's what everybody thought I was going to sign while I was up there. And a lot of my family was just like, oh, yeah, he going to college. He about to do it. Because I'm the only one in my generation that did the military. Everybody else went to school. Yeah. Mm. So I got a cousin that went to MIT. My sister went to Valdosta State down in Georgia. So everybody did school. I'm the only one that did the military. I uh, came back. Didn't talk to nobody in my family. I had already been in talks with the uh, Marine Corps recruiter. Because this dude showed up to everything I did. Plus, I was in Gerald TC at the time. So, he showed up to everything I did. So, I knew him, knew him. So, I just walked in his office. I said, look, Doc, I'm going to go do this last visit. If I, if it ain't warm and fuzzy, I'm coming back. Had the paperwork ready to go. He knew you was coming back. I came back. Went in there. Gunny Brown was his name. I said, Gunny, check it out. Let's do this. Signed the paperwork. Didn't tell my mama them nothing. How old were you at this time? Because you signed it by yourself. I was eight, 18. 18. 18. He can do it. He could do 18, it. 18, yeah. wrong man status. At least <laughs> I, I thought it. it was. I thought it was. Rude awakening. But I originally, so my original contract was actually to do the Marine Reserves because I still had it in my mind that, you know, maybe if I go do this, get that discipline, get that, that focus going, then maybe I could go back and do the college thing. So, because I still had opportunities, like I said, I still had the ability to go to some colleges. See, and, and a lot of people feel, go to the military thinking that okay, the, they gonna pay for everything, so that's the reason why I'm going. Yeah, that's what a lot of people look at it as. But for me, I knew I did not have the discipline to actually sit in college classes. And, I told and, you and do that. <laughs> I, know, I, you? I, I know. And then I later on found out when I did my experiment with college, I spent more time on the yard than in classroom. <laughs> If it was a cookout, I knew where it was at. <laughs> if it was a party? If it was a party, not only did I know where it was at, I was probably working security at it. <laughs> so 
I, you know, hey, look, I had a lot of jobs. Don't, don't <laughs> I had a lot of jobs. Don't judge me. Don't <laughs> judge me. So I went, so did the, did that for a little while. And then I was like, yo, this reserve stuff is stupid. I don't want to do it. And I got talked into, hey, you can do active duty. Active duty. You can do part-time active duty. You make way more money. And so they hooked me up with it to where I got put on orders. I was working out of New Orleans for a little while. Then I was working out at uh, Camp Pendleton over in California for a little while. Then I finally was like, yo, I done did another exact duty stuff. I'm going to go back and play with the reserves for a little bit. Then my dad was like, boy, you ain't doing nothing. You sitting around having you a good time. You need to get your real career going if you're not finna stay in the military. I was just like, all right, I guess I'm going to go do that. And he was like, hey, you need to go and apply. And this is my stepdad. He was a state mm -hmm. agent in Georgia. Uh, so he was like. And you applied where? Police departments. Oh. <laughs> so I ended up being a police officer in my hometown for a couple of years. Oh, uh, you was uh, that guy. I could tell you wow. was that guy. I did two years. Now, I was actually, I like, it's funny because now I've had people that I would arrest and they would thank me. Why? Cause I didn't do the other stuff. I was like, "Hey, look, fam, look, we made this easy for both of yeah. us. All right? You know, you messed mm -hmm. up. You got caught. You know what that means? I'm better at my job than you are at yours." <laughs> I like the way how you say it. So, yeah. so, yeah. let, hey. so I've had people, and then I've had people come back and, and and thank me and be like, "Hey, man, you know, had you not stopped me that time, I probably would be in a worse situation right now." So, yeah, did yeah. that, and then 2010 came around, and they was like, "Hey." We got to do furloughs. And I said, what's that? What's that? Yeah. It was a they wanted me to still work 12-hour shifts. They took away overtime. And it was cut and pay. Mm -mm. And, and, yeah, the way mm -mm. My, and the way my life is set up, I'm like, yo. Um, so you want me to fight crackheads, deal with people with drama, and not get the same amount of money? I was like, nah, fam, I'm good. I knew all the recruiters in the area. Uh, my original intentions was actually to go back into the Marines. When he talked to my partner who was actually the recruiter there, we actually deployed together, which was funny. And he was like, bro, you don't want to do this. You don't want to come back in. If you come back in right now, you're going needs of the Marine Corps. And I was like, huh? <laughs> He's like, needs of the Marine Corps. And nine times out of ten. What's that? That means just whatever job they give you, that's what you got. Oh, you have no choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and and the brother wasn't trying to do it like that. No I more. thought you had a choice to pick. She did. Cause she he talked to about the army. Marines. This yeah. was with the, the Marines. Marines. You don't have. And a when he told me that, I was just like, "All right, cool." I was like, "You know, I'm kind of smart. I'm gonna go talk to the Air Force recruiter." The Air Force recruiter wasn't ever in the office, so. <laughs> and when I finally did get in contact with him, they looked at me. They was like, "Oh, so you prior service? You was in the Marines? So do you have a degree?" I was like, "No." They was like, "Yeah, fam, ain't nothing we can do for you." Wow. Mm. And finally, my, my boy Horace, who was the recruiter in, uh, for the Army, I walked in there, looked at him. I was like, "Hey, bro." Can you get me in? He was like, yeah, but you probably ain't going to get no job choices that you want. I was like, I don't care. I get in for three years. I'll find a way to switch jobs. Don't worry about that. Just get me back in. He was like, all right, you sure? Yep. What did you come in as? I came into the Army as an aircraft electrician. That's a good job. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was that's, God. that's a good we job. Like, we got those. Oh, Ooh. so. Yeah, <laughs> so, came in as an aircraft so, electrician. So that's. How long did you say? Three years in it? Uh, for doing an aircraft electrician, uh, when did I get about seven, eight years? Eight years before I came to recruiting. Wow! So recruiting, let's get on that. Let's talk about the recruiting for a second. Can Don't I have, do I this. I have one still. question. Just one what? question. Come on! You cut me last time, so it's my turn now. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so because how many people actually go into the military thinking that I'm going to pick a career that whenever I do leave the military, it'll be something useful? We preach that to everybody. We yeah, preach we, it to We everybody. preach it to everybody, but, uh, you know, I've been in a couple of different areas for recruiting. Uh, I, started, I started out in Williamsburg, Virginia, then went up to Brockton, Massachusetts, down to here. So I've seen different it's, – it's a culture thing is what you end up seeing. It's a cultural thing. So you'll see a lot of your minority populations. There, We're looking at the, yo, know, what's going to sustain me if this don't work out? What's the mm -hmm. next best thing? You'll see more of that with the minority groups. Uh, the more affluent individuals, because I can't just say that is right. white or, or white color thing. It's just a more affluent, affluent. individuals. Okay. They tend to be the ones that they just looking for some excitement. They want to do something crazy, like jump out of perfectly good airplanes or, you know, <laughs> blow stuff up and stuff like that. So that's usually where you see that difference at when it comes to that. It's, the, it's a lot of cultural stuff that's involved with that. You can tell it's 
based on how what kind of influencers they have around them. Right, because I see a lot of people who come out and can't get a good job. That's because they didn't take advantage of everything that was offered. Because, see, unfortunately, not everybody that comes in this business take advantage of what's offered. Or when they come in, they do the right thing. Yeah, right. My son-in-law, he, uh, he he actually got out here within the last year. And he um, he's a police he's officer. He's a police officer now. Mm-hmm. He so he did it right. See, so yeah, he did it. That's he what he wanted to do. Right. Oh, he told he me that in lottery. New York. I went up to New York. He's like, I want to be a police officer. K-9 I'm like, really? Specifically. He said, that's mm-hmm. what I wanted to do. This was like... Four years ago, mm-hmm. five years, four years ago. That sounds about right. So a yeah. lot of people, a lot of people will use the military as a springboard into going in law enforcement because oh, you're yeah. going. But you're going, you did it backwards. You're it's going easy. into a similar. You're going into a similar right. structure. Is like, it easier to get into law enforcement being from military in rather than a, a regular is, Joe? In most places, it is, it is because they look at the fact that you already come in with some kind of training. training. You already mm-hmm. got you already got leadership training. You already got problem solving, critical thinking, in depth type training is Fit. what they see. Yes. <laughs> Finish. <laughs> Finish. Well, I, like I said, I, I really was just trying to ask you guys about just the re- recruiting. Okay. And some. <laughs> okay. <laughs> some of the things that you guys see, some of the people that you got, some some cases where you see some people that you help. You know, really see them. They they were you know may have went down the wrong road or. They may have had some challenges that was financially, you know, mm. things that could have held them back. But you guys gave them away. And then you was able to see them growing and blossom into the military to where it was something that they could appreciate. Right. Or you told some people this is not for you. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, ha- we have to do that, too. It's so, our job to pick who we want to work beside. If I go back on the line, when I say on the line, going back to do doing whatever job that I originally joined to do. If I don't want to work beside you, I'm not going to ask you to join. It's simple as that. A lot of people think, oh, we just take whoever we can get. That's not the case at all. That is not the case. One, we got to make sure you're qualified. And two, if I don't feel like I'm going to trust you, if we own, you know, stuff hit the fan and I feel like you got my back, I'm not going to ask you to join. I know people learn and they grow and stuff like that, but you can feel somebody's energy. You know, if I feel like you you ain't got it all, I'm not going. You're not all mentally there. Mentally there, one. Or two, you're just doing a little too much. You just do a little too. You got to know when to turn it on from turn, turn it on. And when you say qualifications, what qualifications do you look for in a person? Age, height and weight, um, your your body fat percentage, uh, education. You have to have at least a GED or a high school diploma or on the track to get one. Um, and you got to have one before you go to basic training. No serious law violations. We got stuff to work around, but nothing like super, super serious and nothing repetitive. Um yeah, you can't have no unpaid tickets or anything. When you say like nothing that. too serious, like can you tell me exactly what like So like just we give can, me an example. So we can work like a possession of marijuana. Okay. Right? We can work something like that or like unlawful carry of a weapon. You know, mm-hmm. people get caught wrong place, wrong time. You know, some people just, you know, they get caught up with marijuana they ain't supposed to, mm-hmm. right? So it's things like that. Um and you have to be drug free when you enlist. We give you of drug course. tests and stuff like that. You have to be completely clean. You know, I know in some states it's legal now, but for us it's still not because uh, we're still federal employees. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's certain certain law violations that we that are waverable, uh, some that are not, mm-hmm. like murder. You of know, course. Some super serious stuff. But if you had like three or four, you know, possession of marijuana, something that's, you can't, that's repetitive. You can't have went to pr- um, prison and get into the military. No, nah, that's, you know. Of you, course not. Mm-mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> once, upon, once upon a time, you know, long ago, oh, in a time before I was around, <laughs> you know, they used to have it where judges would, you know, either you go to jail or you go serve. Mm-hmm. Yeah, them days is long, long gone. gone. <laughs> long gone. Now you got to be like, I'm, a, I'm an upstanding citizen now. I made mistakes. I volunteer. I do, I do all kinds of stuff. You gotta, yeah, you, you gotta be on that level. Um, but I wonder if they should ever bring that back though. No, nah, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say no. It's too much going on. It's too much going on. And you got to look at it where it's like, you know, when we are deployed and stuff, like I got to be able to count on you to do what you supposed to do. Mm-hmm. For example, me being an aircraft electrician on the deployment, I work on the helicopters they use to go and rescue people out of different situations. Last thing they need to worry about me doing is something crazy to where I'm not there to do that job. Right. Mm-hmm. Because now that aircraft, this aircraft can't launch. Now this person that, you know, they could potentially get there in time to save, they can't. Right. So it's creating yeah, a whole it. new situation that comes up. It's so much stuff when you overseas, though. You carrying a live, you know, a weapon with live rounds in it. When I say live rounds, it's a loaded weapon. You acting crazy, you would, you got a loaded weapon in your hand. First thing you we know, take. That's yeah. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if we take it, then what? You know, and don't think that every deployment is in that that kind of situation. Because when I deploy, I've been lucky enough to go places. I can still go shopping. You know, I tell people <laughs> all the time. Yes, I was artillery. Yes, I was in the first job, the first combat job to open up the females. However, oh, oh really? <laughs> I I won't kick nobody's door in. I wasn't like in there in the fight. Like I did my damage from a distance. You know, that's the job that I chose. I didn't know that initially, but again, everything happens for a reason. When I learned, I was like, yes. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I can do it But I ain't got to All the way do it You know So I'm like If you're not about that life Don't choose that Because If you choose Like an infantry job Or a special forces job Or something Something that requires you To be in that kind of situation You have to have that mindset To know You need to be on All your P's and Q's When you go over there If you can't handle A situation like that You don't need to choose that job And mm -hmm. that's where we come in When it comes to that job selection Where it's like he like I want infantry mm, Are you sure you want infantry Are you built to be An infantryman You know Because now it's there's no gender, there's no gender roles. Right, really. that's what I was wondering. Everything so a woman can is, also be in yes, everything is open to females now. Rangers, everything. We had to. Um, one of my close friends was the first black female ranger. You know, it's, it's it's she she broke down barriers for everybody. You know, so everything is open to everybody now. So when somebody sits in my chair and they pass the ASVAB test and they got you know all these great and wonderful scores and stuff like that and that 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 job list comes up and we go to pick like what's this what's that what's this that sound fun I'm looking at them like. That's fun, huh? You got to do this, 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 this. Is it still fun? You know, not to talk them out of a job, but just to be, be that person, be just to be, be real. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm being real with you. You're going to have to do this. You're going to have to do that. You're gonna, I'm going to tell you the good, bad, and ugly along with all the jobs. And if I don't know the job like that, I'm, I know somebody that has that job and I can <laughs> call them. Listen to this person. Tell them about basic training. Tell them about job training. Tell them about your deployments, what you got to do. You know, what does that job entail? What do you have to do specifically from a female, you know, person of color, whatever the case may be, just to, to relate to that person. And these are unfiltered people. You know, they're not recruiters nine times out of ten. When I call them, mm -hmm. they're really, they're still doing that job. And there are some positions that females still have not um, entered into as yet. Oh, we've been no, in all everything's of them. wide open now. I know it's wide open, but we in there. they still okay, I I don't choose this one, I don't choose this one, I choose that one. Is there any career that a woman has not, you know, entered into? We have been no, in we are in all of they've them. They've officially been in all of them. In we all. are in all of them. Okay. Yeah, I would just um like I said, that's that's it's it's just great that you guys are developing real relationships with them and not just picking anybody. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> earlier when I asked you, I was just trying to pull a case where you guys follow these guys as they when they go in you know some of them ever come back or that, that's what I was asking about like the, a success story or something where these guys was able to come out of situations because the military was there for them and they you know they've made y'all hadn't been in it that long though far as recruiting he has I have I've done all my recruiting in Dallas okay so <laughs> the only major really I wouldn't even say only major because it's still major. Again. So, so I, <laughs> how long you been recruiting in all? In all, I'm going into my seventh year. So okay, so 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 most you, of my first contracts are already either out of the army, of the army. or they are they progressing out. Have any of them came back and researched you and talked? I've to had you? several of them because um, several of them still stay in contact with me through uh, social media, and they'll hit me up and talk about, man, I'm so glad you helped me get out of here. That's what I was, man. Trying. You helped me out with this, man. You helped me out with that. Some of them will still reach out to me because they saw me as a mentor, and they'll just be like, hey, Sarbi, that's what I'm looking at doing. What you what you think? What you think? Mm -hmm. That's because you have part. that knowledge. Yeah, because you've been through it, and and that's dope, man. That's that was the part that I just was trying to. Poor because you you know when you go into a situation like that I know I was 18 and I went up there and signed them papers I was gonna go in that thing and uh, they didn't take me. <laughs> you sound hurt. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had screws in my knees because oh. I had a football injury and uh, yeah I sure was trying to I would have been in that thing if I if that hadn't happened because I definitely went and took the test and everything but yeah I yeah I would have been in it but I was trying to get through that without the thought that would have got me through but it didn't but uh, God had a different plan stars. for yep. me mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying and you right. can't have any of that to you can uh it's a it's a process it's a process and it's every situation is different every case is different every surgery is different you know and does it depend on the recruiter because if the recruiter pulling for you and no, no, no we just the middleman we got the documents from the doctor we got to get all your doctor's notes and everything else if you had any serious surgeries or procedures done and we send them up to another doctor i, I tell all of us i say i'm not a doctor i don't know what half this mean i'm just page one page two page three 
hand it to the other doctor, mm-hmm. you know. Wow. So it, it depends on, like, your recovery process. Are you fully recovered? You know, what's the motion of, like, in your in your case, you got screws in your knee. Uh, is the motion still there? All your motion yeah. still there? You know, does the snap crack a pop? Yeah, no, you know, ain't no popping You tried to juke me in the chair? Yeah, I did juke you. Know? <laughs> I didn't lose <laughs> you. He definitely threw one at you. Yes, he did. <laughs> so <laughs> so, so you, you. you just got to, you, you know, you, you got to understand that I didn't go down that road, but I went down a different road, and I would never change the thing that God gave me, you know, because right. I went through yep. a lot. But at the end of the day, for somebody else to be able to see, you know, that they can make it through through me. So I, I definitely understand my path and why mm-hmm. I, I was walking in purpose the mm-hmm. whole time. So yes. I get it. Um, but you guys, man, uh, definitely appreciate you for coming on the platform. Um, you know, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you guys and they wanted to try to enlist into the army and they wanted to, how would they do that? Man, I got social media. I got my cell phone. I got an office phone. I got an email. I got it okay, all. Okay, well, tell us. 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 I don't really work individual people no more. Oh, so what do you do? I run the recruiting station. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So I got a total of six recruiters that work for me. And at any given time, each of them working with four or five people. And I'm responsible for everybody. Wow. That's great. So. And you're yeah. over. So how does that work? You're over like Dallas? So we're broken down. Um, there's the large There's the large spectrum, which is our brigade, which covers several states in one area, and then it starts breaking down to smaller regions. So we got down to our battalion, which is Dallas Battalion, which basically we cover all the DFW, Metroplex area. Then Grand Prairie, Mansfield, Cedar Hill, uh, Waxahachie. Uh, Did she just Arlington. say Waxahachie? Mm, we go like all the way girl. down. We Waxahachie. Go we go say all the way down. Waxahachie. Hey. 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 My bad. We go all the way down. There. Your country showing. <laughs> so when you move to a different, because you're going to Georgia, right. is that by your choice or they say, well, this is where you need to go? It's my choice. That, oh, it my is choice. choice. My husband and I are both active duty. So oh. when it comes to that, they have to make sure they can move us to an area where, where both of us fit. Okay. So and that's a, that could have been a whole other story because yeah. both of us in. So, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, that's that's nice though. At least y'all. I mean, that's the way my daughter and her she was. was. She was reserved, and she wanted Did she to get go out full. of reserve. No, she's, she's still, still reserved, reserved now. But she wanted to go full, but they like okay didn't want both of them to be full because they have kids. So right. it's like one need to be reserved and yeah. one to be full. Mm-hmm. So how is that different from both of y'all are full and you have kids? Well, we didn't come in with kids. That's it. We didn't come. We came in, you know, straight out of high school and stuff. He was a little older than me. Um, he's a military military kid, so he's been all over. His his mom and dad were both in in, in the army specifically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but do he know do he know karate? No. That's my man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do he, he watched movies. He watched the movies, but no. I had to ask him. <laughs> that boy don't be doing I'm sorry, nothing. You teach that your kids. Uh, I, I, they, go. they have to earn it. They have to earn. Same way I earned it. You know, you can't get in trouble in school. Good grades, all this other stuff. Because the same way a coach runs a team, if you mess up at home or you mess up in school, you mess up on the team too. So, and my dad always ran his like that. So, and I run around the same way. So, I'll teach you something, but if I feel like you're going to use it in the wrong way, I'm not going to teach you nothing more, no more. You know, so mm-hmm. I, if I teach you how to kick the right way and I find out you kick somebody in school, that's it. No more. It well, you know, me otherwise. I, I got all my training <laughs> from, from uh, uh, you know, Mr. Miyagi. Right. It's going to be real. You can't you get wax on, wax off. Yeah, I know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and I don't ask, I don't look for it, mm-hmm. but if it come my way, yeah. I still know how to paint the fence. There you go. You know what I'm saying? There you go. You can bring the new school. You got to pick up your jacket, put it on the hook. Uh, oh, <laughs> that was the new school. The new one. So, okay, so, I mean, thank you guys for coming on the show. Mm-hmm. Is there, did you get everything out? I won't go into any morality. Okay, we we gonna get him back. She leaving. We 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 could get her. We'll go down to Atlanta. We go down there. It's all the same. You in Atlanta? It's all the same. No, I'm going to Hinesville. How far so is that from Atlanta? Four that hours. Is. Oh, well, that's a smooth I know, right? I'm, I'm, close, drive. I'm close to Savannah. I'm okay. close to Savannah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Savannah, Georgia. And, and and like I said, we go to Atlanta all the time. Yeah, we do. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'll y'all never been to Georgia then. No, 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 because y'all been to Atlanta, y'all ain't. Never you don't been really go all the way in that thing. You gotta go. You gotta go south. My brother lives in Atlanta, so. Dude, so what, what but I mean, it? Atlanta is all right. He's you like, know about Mo- right. Moultrie, Alabama, Mo- Moultrie, Georgia. Mm-hmm. You know about that? My, I had a guy on here that was from Moultrie, Georgia. How far is that from where you are? From where I'm originally from? Yes, Moultrie. Yeah. We on opposite sides of the state. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. 
Well, I got to get over there where you at. What's over there? You about North Carolina or South Carolina? The part I'm from, I'm from just south of Savannah. So we about 45 minutes south from Savannah. My actual hometown is right between Savannah, Georgia, and Jacksonville, Florida. Man. Mm. Man, hey, man, you know, like I said, man, you guys, uh, just for you guys serving this country, man, and just doing the things that you do, man, it it, it, it make me try to act. We got a, a, the DFW, what is that down there? Oh, that's the vet. The, the, um, yeah, y'all got a place the down VA, there. The, the VA. Or, uh, yeah. I think I saw they, it there. They, yeah. they got the yeah. American yeah. Legion. They, yeah, they, I was about to say the bar. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the bar. <laughs> it's down there. It's, it's right there. I've they, seen the flags. And they be kicking it. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a good we time. We always tease because you have the bar right we here. We got an AA, AA right here. Right next door. <laughs> I asked the guy, I said, are you oh, from man. AA? He said, no, I'm from a place where we we drinking down here. I'm like, and then one of them be like, no, I don't go, I don't drink. So you have to be careful how you talk to the people that pay at the store. But it's so weird because a lot of people at AA are vets. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's like they be going back and forth, although they don't drink anymore. You know mm -hmm. what they I mean? They still go down there. So, so is I, we got to talk about uh, uh, what they call it PTSD. PTSD. We got to talk about that because you 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 guys are here, and I don't want to miss out on the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I was about to shut it down, but. My wife has this thing. We wrote a letter one day, and she said she wanted to help people that got out of the military to have a place to go so that they can, you know, know how to come back into society once they go through. Because I heard a lot of different stories, and, and, and I stuff, heard it you know? from mainly the civilian side because I knew people who were married to um, military individuals, and what would happen is that they'll come back home and they didn't feel comfortable talking to them because they wouldn't understand, I guess, what they went through and stuff. So they saw all of the nightmares and all of the crazy stuff and it became where it became where they would end up stalking them and it would divorce came and you know, all of that. And I felt like they weren't adjusted. They, they couldn't adjust back to society really well. So you ever seen somebody with PTSD? A lot of people at um, AA I have had PTSD. Because there's a gentleman that I know. How you doing? You got it? Got diagnosed with it last year. They, I mean, but see, that's the trip because the officers that come here and stuff, you know, I, I tell officers all the time, like, that I they, feel for them because they out there looking at all this crazy stuff. And then and I got friends as officers, like, it's like, dang, man. you. And how do you I, I mean, deal with that every day, seeing that I have to go home to your kids and family and you know what I mean? So one of the one of the biggest challenges you got dealing with PTSD is knowing how to communicate it. That's one of the biggest challenges that come out of it because, for one, trying to explain what you've seen, where you've been, and how you were doing it and everything else to somebody who's never been there is it's just difficult to do. That's where, like I told you, like me and my dad rebuild our relationship. Yeah. That's actually part of what helped us rebuild our wow. relationship is because he had he understood with it and he understood where I was coming from and what I had been dealing with and everything else. But does the military give you counseling? Yep. It was just I was uh I was young and reckless. Um, <laughs> no, okay. When the counseling was offered, mm -hmm. I was like, nah, man, no, I don't I'm need good. That. I'm, I'm good. good. So it's not mandatory. It wasn't. But it's all, it goes back to all the stigma, stigmatisms when it comes to dealing with mental health. All right? Once upon a time in the military, you know, if you sought mental health for yourself, you were being soft. You weren't, mm -hmm. you weren't living up to what you're supposed to be. Well, and career. it'll hold you and back it'll from what your I, career. That's, that's what, what I, I heard. A lot of and then you, that's what I heard. In, mm -hmm. then you add into that, that, you know, cultural stigmatism that, you know. Right, you're black. We don't, we don't mm -hmm. do that. We don't know that's. You go pray about it and you good. Yeah. Right. Go so, to you know, that's, you know, go to church, go, go pray about it and, you know, tried it that way, you know, made some interesting choices in between. But I'm here now. So now is it mandatory? It's, uh, if it's identified, you can get a command referred. Um, usually if we identify somebody having struggles with any type of mental health, we'll encourage them to go get it, seek the help they need to go sit down and actually talk to a counselor, go sit down and, you know, just try to figure out a better way to work through whatever it is that they're dealing with at the time. Because what I wanted to do, and and I haven't done a lot of research into it yet, but you can let me know if there is a program like this already existing. Just like how somebody go to prison and before they come back out in society, they go to the halfway house. 
so that they help them whether try to get a job, where you're going to live, blah, 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 whatever. Mm -hmm. We have those. That's what yeah. I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Somewhere so that you war, go so to. called a warrior transition unit called mm -hmm. WTU. Right. So, and that helps for people that are seriously injured, mm -hmm. uh, like physically injured, losing limbs or things like that, or people that are uh, being discharged for uh, like mental health reasons and stuff. It's literally a transition unit. And we have transition programs for people not going through that as well to teach them how to get back into the civilian world, how to use their benefits and things like that. So um, it's not mandatory, but it's one of the, it's one of those things that are offered mm -hmm. that a lot of people either are unaware of or don't take advantage of. But if they take advantage of it, they literally lay everything out Barney style. If you're going through this, you need to do this, 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 this. If this is what you're going through, you need to do this, this, this. You know, if you don't have any of this, but you got this, you go this, 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 this. They lay it out step by step. I wish it was mandatory, though, because a lot of people don't do it. Right. And then they'll come out and be like, well, I didn't know that I could get this benefit yeah. or I could go here. I hear it all the time. Well, that's yeah. one of the things like the Army uh, implemented the Soldier for Life program. So a part of when you're getting ready to get out, you go through the Soldier for Life program, and that's where they highlight the different things. They sit down with you. They teach you how to do uh, resumes and all mm -hmm. that stuff, how to properly Rock prepare interviews. for interviews, how to you know set your stuff up, translate what you've done in the Army to where it makes sense for the civilian world. You can even apply for internships with Microsoft, GM, uh, Lockheed Martin, uh, Raytheon. It's so, many, it's so many programs out there that we tell – people that are talking about the army or considering the army about but of course it kind of goes through one ear out the other because they're not in that position yet right but if they listen to what we say and they they ask those questions once they're in what programs are offered to me because i don't plan on doing 20 years when you sign up you don't sign up for 20 years you do small increments at a time mm -hmm. so you have that control over your career whether you want to change a job change your location maybe you want to go reserves or something like that you have that control and the ball is literally in your court but they have to ask those questions. They have right. to be headstrong. That's you know? in life. That's in life. If you, yes, if you don't ask the right questions, you don't get the right answers. Exactly. And that's everything in life. Exactly. But um, going back to PTSD, do you have nightmares still today? Not like I used to. Not like you used to? So was it only because you spoke to your dad that helped you to overcome this? Or was there other things it that you did? My dad, um, my wife being there supporting me and everything else and working through it and uh just getting to a point where it was be able to say, you know, it was okay for me not to be okay. Because mm -hmm. a lot of it is you just internalize a lot of it. And then when you internalize a lot of it, it just eventually you just boil over and the explosion eventually happens. And you still have triggers? Yes. So that's something that you just have to live with for the rest of your life. Does anybody actually overcome it like 100%? I've not met anybody yet that has. It's just like I said, it's a challenge. And it, it is what it is when you ask me because I just keep moving. And some people, because I've heard some people say, some people say it doesn't affect them. They don't get PTSD. They go through it, do all of that crazy stuff, everything, and they're fine. That's, Everybody's says, built different. Says the guy that came on here that's out of the Army and he has this about four books. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the, here's the thing. Everybody look at but everybody look at PTSD as just a military thing. It's not just mm -hmm. a military thing. Not at all. They actually, you have somebody that's in a horrible, horrific car crash, they can come out with PTSD. That's true. Right. You have somebody that, you know, they end up being a victim of some type of assault or anything mm -hmm. like that, they end up having PTSD. And so it's just traumatic stress. Anything disorder, traumatic. Yeah. But it now is, it's become such a thing now, but before it was only categorized with right. the military. But that's why it's big now because there's so many of us deployed during all the afghanistan and iraq stuff and come back and you know not knowing that's what it was so now it triggered more studies more research more plans in order to help somebody go through it or help somebody know understand how they need to cope with what they seen what they did how they did it just like mental health um before it was mental illness if you mention mental health people are like oh they crazy need to go to the nut house now there's a difference between mental health and mental illness yeah everybody have situations with mental health because whether you were raised in a single parent household and you felt like your dad didn't pay you any attention whatever and that now boils over to how you act now that's mental health yes so it's just a lot of things that are bringing awareness to self-care that's yes. what everybody's preaching now is self-care. Yes. And by knowing where you're from and certain triggers is how you can fix mm -hmm. your future, so to say, and how you react to certain things. Yeah, yep. and, and, and that's that's true 100%. You get into like all the holistic healing, you know, the spiritual awareness and things like that. Yeah. And that's all, a lot of people say it's cliche, but I look at it as 
it's finally being talked about. It's finally being publicized mm-hmm. because it's all true. Everybody has some sort of mental mental health is mental health. Mm-hmm. If you got a mind and you have some sort of mental <laughs> up there, you got to take care of it. You got to be healthy up there. If Whether you, you want it. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> if you got some kind of mental. <laughs> all right. If you have the mind, you got to take care of your right. mind, body, yeah, soul. That's what they always that's say. That's mind, true. body, soul. Yeah, yeah. So how important, I mean, I, I don't know if I want to ask y'all this, but I guess I will. How important is God uh, in in your lives, it's everything. So I I, I grew up in the church. Um, I didn't ask you that. No, <laughs> no that's, that's so that, that I don't give nobody. Me and God, me and God, been homies for a long time. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> I, that's the part right there. The growing up in the church thing is cliche. Some people I grew mean, up in church and don't know. God oh still. man, mm-hmm. I, I, that's why I asked you. Do you really? I mean, because. It, I mean, you know, it's things like: Do you pray with your kids and your wife? Do you do you do the things that it take to say, "Hey, man, I'm only human." I know you do it because I can tell you to had some breakthroughs. You know, to, <laughs> <laughs> you can feel it. Why we got to Why we got to talk about okay. it like that? Though? You know, that's not a bad thing. No, I've done a lot of stuff. No, it's a great thing. But I can tell you know that you understand self awareness is real, and I can see that you you you've tapped into a place where you okay with being you. That's what I feel from you. You know what I mean? And you, on the other hand, I mean, women have an inherent nature to love. So I, I don't, I, I know y'all already, it's something about women and God, you know. If you just, that's why a man's supposed to be somewhat of a leader in a woman's life, you know, because the woman, she she already going to tap into Jesus. You know what I'm saying? They always yeah. do. If you even read, they always around him. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I just, I just say, man, I wanted to say that part because so many people need to hear that mm-hmm. because... It, it, you got to fill your spiritual void. Yes. As, you know, we talked about the other things, the mental illnesses and all the different things. I had counselors on here. And my biggest thing is, who is your counselor for real? Like, who mm-hmm. do you really know that you have somebody truly that you can go to when ain't nobody else there for mm-hmm. you? Yeah. You see what I'm yeah. saying? You got to tap into that as well. counselors got to be counseled. Man. That's very true. That's yeah. very true. And one thing that we harp on huge in the mental, we have chaplains and stuff, but I myself is, I'm a trained equal opportunity leader. Okay. So I teach equal opportunity classes, race, religion, uh, gender, sexual orientation, mm-hmm. all of that stuff. Cause you have to be respected no matter what realm you fall into, no matter how you pray, who you pray to, everything. I have to be aware of all of it. I have to teach it. You know, this is why they do this. This is the root of it. That don't mean you shame them because you can't shame them. That's your, that's your brother, sister in arms. You know, you have to respect it, you know, cause that's how they choose to worship. So, me learning all the other religions and stuff like that, religion, spirituality, everything, going back to the African spirituality, all of it, crystals, everything, sage, all of it. I respect it all. I understand it. You know, I love it. I love it all. I love everybody. I like that. <laughs> I, I love mean, everybody. I, 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 I talk about that a lot as well on here. Like, yeah, like just yeah. being able to meet people where they are. Exactly. That's I love important. God. You it's might important. love. You might worship Buddha. You might whatever. worship Allah. Hinduism, what, it don't Nawa, matter. Buddhism, it's whatever. all the same. It's all rooted in the same. Yeah, you, yeah. Just, you just Something love everybody. Something came to my mind when you were talking about equal opportunity and equal. Um, how does... Um, transgender work with the military because when you have a person who is transgender born a male and now a female and want to come into the military Mm -hmm. she he she or she you know depends on how they recognize themselves now do they go to the female barracks or do they go to the male barracks how does that all of that work in the military they have they go through it's a medical process they have to go through as well we have to get all the medical documentation and things like that because you can identify as a male or female but if you don't have certain steps, certain steps in the transition process completed, you may identify as a female, but scientifically you're a male okay. until X, Y, Z is complete. You know, so there are ways you have to be a certain you have to be at a certain point in the process um, in order to be able to join. You can't just be taking hormones, but haven't done anything, you know, and if you are, we got to get a plan and everything else. Like it's it's a it's a process because it's new. You know, it's a, it's a newer thing to join the military as a transgender. However, it's still possible. And has anybody um, joined and then wanted to be a transgender while they're already there and say, okay, I just want to switch. I want to go over here. So you've had soldiers and, and Marines and sailors alike that's already that were already in that have gone through the processes mm-hmm. and done that transition. Um, so they're, they're, they're out there. Uh, because I was just wondering, how do you start? Because you start off, say, you're in the male barracks right now because that's where you started off. But now I want to be a female, so I'm going to do the surgeries while I'm in, you know, active duty or whatever. Now I need to be transferred because I'm now a woman transferred over here. How does that? So, I mean, we really, I mean, our barracks ain't, ain't split it's up. Like, I don't it's like, it's our like barracks dorms. is like yeah, a, a college dorm. dorm building. Oh, okay. Everybody got a locked door. 
to their room, so everybody had their own space in it. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the barracks are nice now. Yeah, they spoil. Yeah, I we tell, don't live that. I tell all these new people. We don't live that old life no more. Life. Like, okay. No. <laughs> I'm telling you, you go in, the, the new barracks now, when I initially joined, is right before they started the renovation for all the Army living. You know, mm-hmm. they always say Air Force is the nice one. Air Force, Air Force. Even now, a lot of stigmatism say Air Force is better. Air Force is, and I'm like, you have to pay attention to the upgrades now. All of the barracks in the Army have been renovated to the point where they, everybody has suites. So you have either two females to a room, two males to a room. You never share a room okay. with the opposite gender. That's what I. But okay. you go in and you have you know a shared dining area, shared bathroom, and it's a big bathroom too, like nice bathroom. Mm-hmm. And then they have their own rooms, but their their key the they have a key card. Closet. Walk in closet. Walk in closet. I say that's a big closet. Me and my boy put his motorcycle in his closet no. before we went to a training exercise. Well, we had to make sure wasn't nobody gonna steal it. That's we was gonna be gone for a month, so we put his motorcycle. That's I won't nice. say where we was at when we that's did nice. that, but we put it inside the closet and it yep. fit. And it comes. Wow. It's furnished. With it's still furnished. room in there. Yes. It's furnished. So wow. all you got to do is supply your own. You put your own swag on it. You make your room your room. You put your greenery in there, whatever floats your boat. I got to ask you also, you know, I have to get them off here, but then they keep going. To it's, it's, it's so much. It's, it's, it's so much. It's so much. It's so much. It's so much. And real you started it off with the, we're going to have a real conversation. Yeah. So people can see y'all are real people. Real people. Because most people, when they see us, they see the uniform. They're like, oh, that's a robots soldier. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. robots. That's how people do see police but officers, But they don't understand. When I, when I clock. When I leave the office and I hit my front door, I'm like Batman. Where I'm out of this gym you, shorts and a t-shirt. Where do you Already. think that stigmatism came from where every time someone see, it's really somebody in a uniform. It's not only military. We see an officer. You see yeah. a fire. Um, it's the media. It's, it's, it's the, the media, media because you have to look at movies and TV shows. How do they portray yeah. the military? How do they portray even, law even enforcement? Right you remember watching the Andy Griffin show? That was my show. Andy ain't, oh, never, oh, Andy ain't never take yeah. the uniform like off that. unless you go fishing. Always in the barracks, nah, always doing everything. That bad. is not uh, When I get off work, I'm off. I'm ambushed. I seen you when you were off. See, you met me. But, when uh, I was and off. when I seen you, uh, I, I talked to everybody. Yeah. So it, it probably seems strange, don't it? Do mm-hmm. I, I don't that's how you spoke. I am real. But if you were in uniform, you would still talk to you. Yeah. I'm going to talk to you. So yeah. I, I, I was like, okay. And then I'm looking for opportunity to get somebody to subscribe. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, then I tell you, I'm like, you need to yeah. subscribe to Boss Talk. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's like, it's the baddest podcast. Yeah, it's the nicest one. It's the hottest oh, one. Yeah. <laughs> and then I went there. I was like, oh. Yeah, I well, she went in, she went and looked at it. She came to me. She was like, hey. We need to get on this. Yeah, that's dope, <laughs> We need man. to get on this podcast. It's growing. I was it like, is, like it crazy. Is. I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's a great yet? thing. Who did who subscribe? Did you didn't subscribe. What's that? See what I mean? <laughs> I subscribe. He didn't subscribe. See, get I don't be. I don't get you. When they say on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, press that button. There it is. <laughs> hey, I'm going to keep that. That was the best. I had that dang phone on. That was the one right there. So that repeat, the repeat, repeat. No. Nah. <laughs> right back. Right back. All right. Yeah, but, but the thing I, I want to ask is like, my ask this time is like you guys go through a lot. I mean, we see some of those post traumatic uh, disorders, like with with military issues happening, people uh, people being murdered, all type of things. You people are human, so we've seen cases, especially here close by. I won't mm-hmm. say where, but mm-hmm. it's it's been a lot of issues. Right, uh, my daughter's up there, but anyway. <laughs> That, that, I just came from there. Uh, okay. I just, so I just want to know, picked, like, up what you was putting how down. does they, how does that affect you guys? Does it, do they put in, implement, try to implement new rules, try to figure out different to structures? To fix certain things. It's yeah. just like, it's like anything else in society. Once you start identifying that there's an issue, mm-hmm. you start trying to tailor things in order to prevent those issues. You start we increase the training on different stuff so that, you know, folks are paying more attention to what's going on around them. They're not just sitting there saying, oh, I'm just I'm just here. Oh, I see this going on. I'm not going to do nothing about it. But we have all that training. Like uh, Amber says, she's an EO. I'm, I'm EOL trained as well. But we also have ones that's trained in dealing with what we call SHARP, which is our sexual harassment assault right. rape prevention program. So we have all these programs and training that's out there. Um, and one of the things I always try to tell people and get them to understand is, just because you left the crib don't mean what's in society ain't with you in the army. Mm. It happens. It happens no matter, we can't we can't really control every aspect of who an individual is. We had that initial interview, the initial contact. We sit down, we talk to them throughout the process. 
and you know, and we, they go through them don't psychological. Um, they are when I tell you they are drilled with questions. Yeah, and they, they'll ask you the same question about ten different ways. That's just what to I'm wondering. Yeah, we go through all of that, so okay. it's, it's not like you know, hey, you are gonna easily identify yo this person might it's be crazy, a little, mm-hmm. right? You know, we we go through a lot of that stuff, so we do implement a different a lot of different things in order to curtail stuff from happening to completely stop stuff from happening. So we do have those programs in place. But you know what? But what? Um, civilians because i've heard a lot of people say this when you have situations that pop up on the news Mm -hmm. and things that happen and then all of a sudden they're trying to fix it implement as you said implement um things so that it won't happen again people will say but this has been happening for years the only reason you're trying to fix it now is because it came out in the open and everybody's Mm -hmm. seeing it well you have to do something no 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 but if it had been happening before like why not try to fix it before it actually but that's what that's what the the funny part is is everybody made it seem like we just started trying to do stuff or that they've just been these programs have been around for years Mm -hmm. they're not new they oh. they've been around for decades. Where okay. they just they grow, and they as evolve. they grow, as as society changes, as the people we're dealing with change, as the people that make up the army changes. You know, obviously, you gotta adjust for what you have at that point. Mm-hmm. Right, and that's what they're always constantly doing. It's not a the the army is not a stagnant thing. It's always a change and adjusting. Develop, you know, always evolving. developing. There's new technology. <laughs> at one point in time, you only had 120 career fields to choose from. Now you got over 150 career fields to choose from. So it's just, it's always something new. Yeah, I got to ask this again. Like, now, what was the, uh, um, what did they feel about Boss Talk 101 when I when you when you first when you first looked at it? What was the what was the feeling? And he said he said we the baddest around. I was like, yeah, okay. But then I went. I was like, no, they really they 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 really bought it. They really bought it. And I told my husband we got to subscribe. So what's the what's the thing they always say? Like, comment, subscribe, push a little bell so you get the notification. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow, man, it's all there, man. It's all there. I just like the fact that we did it and we was just doing it because it was a pandemic and we was trying to make sure that people didn't forget about our boutique. You know, like we're going to get people to but come in. But it evolved into something And God just said, greater. you know what? This is what you're going to need to do. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we're doing some different things. We have a whole mm-hmm. other channel that uh, we're starting up that already it already came. You know, we have 38,000 subscribers on it as well. And uh, it's going to be huge once we get through. We're going to do a remodel in here pretty quick. And, um, yeah, you you guys are going to see some changes. So when you go down in Georgia, you're still going to see us working. That's huge. Yeah. That's big. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully y'all uh, like my business page, too. <laughs> man, hey, we with hey, you, man. We, I knew that was we coming. We with you, man. Right. We with you, man. No, I no. love the fact that you're an entrepreneur and you're doing so much. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I mean, so like, let's talk wow. about that for a minute. The, the, what were you down there for anyway? Let's talk about that. Let's get at to the, At the store? Yeah. I had to get some shirts, man. For what? I had to, I had you to know, make some Because you have all those different things. What you about your business? Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting up here. Hey, hey. She, she do talk. a little bit of everything. I do like it, though, I because I, it was probably because of, the, you know, things that you want to do. You, mm-hmm. you you in the Army, but you still, you know. I'm still a person. Yeah, I you got things that you, yeah, what's that I stuff do. you do? DIY, whatever? DIY. 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 Do it yourself. DIY. Do it. I, that's do why, it hey, look, I don't even be doing it. So at the end of the day, <laughs> I'm just looking like, really? Right. You really want to do that? I'm uh, chilling. Like, <laughs> I'm telling you. So, so man, I've always been pretty crap. You know, in the country, you, you make stuff. You mm-hmm. ain't got a whole lot. You just got, we. I, I really came up on the field. I came up on a farm. We had hogs, you know, we had oh. geese, we had chick, we had it all. We did too. So I'm telling you, we didn't have much, but what we had, it was, I didn't think we, I thought we had everything. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, we just grab stuff and make it. So that creativity has always kind of been there. Um, my grandparents were artists on both sides. Dope. I'm talking about, can play any instrument you put in front of them, Dope. paint, carve, do whatever. They was there. My, um, my grandmother on my uh, black side She was a seamstress okay. That's how my great grandmother That's how oh. she made a living You know So we had land We had everything So the crea- creativity Is like in my blood mm-hmm. However During the pandemic Some of them passed away uh, My paternal grandmother Who was like The artist that could do everything She passed away oh, And sorry. I wasn't able to make it back For the funeral Because mm-hmm. of travel restriction And everything else But I kind of Grieved in a creative way I started refurbishing furniture You know I started carving stuff I started drawing I didn't know how to handle my grief because I couldn't get back to say goodbye, you know? So I kind of, when I picked up anything to make something, it didn't matter what it was, I kind of felt her presence around. I felt my ancestors Mm -hmm. around me and that kind of pushed me to keep going. Um, And I just watched videos. How do I make this? How do I make that? And uh, it just, 
I posted. I was like, I found a new hobby and people wanted to buy it. And I was like, well, shoot. <laughs> I'll make some more. And As it just kind of evolved. you the pandemic, how did um, the military handle the pandemic? We was restricted just like everybody else was. Yep. It, 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 it turned into, uh, hey, y'all need to sit still. Go on, sit down somewhere. Go on, mm. sit down. Mm. And when, we, when we figure this thing out, then we go back to playing. Because at yeah. one time I saw on the news, um, people were talking about, because, you know, just like PTSD or depression, counselors will tell you, well, you need to be in contact with people to try to get out of that depression. But mm -hmm. then when you have the pandemic to tell you, don't be in contact with people. And these are people who are depressed and at home. Ooh. It was causing like a lot of suicide and a lot of problems. Like, how did you see a lot of that? Uh, not with our group because we had to stay in contact. It was virtual contact, but we had to stay in contact. So we were always talking, always checking in. So we that was, helped. We were still yes. working in a sense. We were we were teleworking. We called it teleworking, working from home. Uh, we were still working. So I guess keeping us busy and not just having us sitting around twiddling our thumbs, I guess, helped us a lot. Um, the people that were you know, in what we call regular army on the bases and stuff like that. They weren't able to telework. They had their own ways, you know, maybe they checked in from a distance and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So they had the ways where they still checked on each other daily to get accountability for each other and make sure everybody was still good to go. So they had to kind of adapt. We always okay. adapt. I just was wondering, because when you talked about the pandemic, I'm like, that popped up in my head. Right. I'm like, hmm. But I know that one you of your pages that you posted. Get their ranking. Make sure you, people don't know where they, where they stand. You know, they ranked up in that army. Yeah, yeah you're staff <laughs> sergeant, right? Yeah, get them rankings. Yes. Yep, we both staff sergeants. How important okay. is it? Do you, is it like, strive to be, like, go higher? That's the whole part of it, right? You What's want the highest? To be, uh, as far money. as enlisted, as far as the enlisted side go, the highest you can make is a uh, SAR major. Sergeant Command Major. Sergeant Major. And How then, much further you have to go to get to that? To that? Yeah. Yeah. Further than I plan on going. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're going to get them 37 years no, in quick I'm, plan. I'm, I'm coming up on 20 hard and fast. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to. How many more years you plan to give? I've heard stories about that. About four, um, four maybe five more five years, years. And then I'm a. And your wife, I'm she's not? Tenant. So my wife was actually in the Air Force. Oh, oh she yeah, was? She was smart. She's retired. <laughs> She got out. Oh, she wait got a minute stuck. now. Oh, just whoa. talked about that. That's what he whoa. said. <laughs> that he whoa. went to go to the Air Force because he was smart. I heard him say yeah. it. Whoa. Didn't he say yeah. that? He I fell thought, into the stigma. Whoa. And they said he, he fell into it. That and was the stigma. Out. Right. And they found, found out. out real quick. It was just that a stigma. It was just and a stigma. And the way in which the recruiter answered you when you were trying to get over there, he was trying to tell you you weren't smart enough. because That's what they told me. That's what he was saying because he's when he asked you, did yeah. I? If you finished anything, and he, because you didn't finish anything, and you keep on quitting and going to this, they're like, "Nah, this is not really for you." That's yep. really what he was trying to the say. What they hit me with, but you know, look at me now. But look at her; she's she ended up there. Yeah, yeah. she did. She well, did ten years in ten the years Air Force. And she got out. Got out when we got married, and uh, oh. then became a OPN. And what's an OPN? A licensed practical nurse. Oh, okay. Or what they call it here in Texas, LVN. I have yeah. no okay. idea. Uh, yeah, yeah, that I, one. Anybody mm -hmm. that come to me talk nurse, I say you're trying to get all them different letters. They all got money. The more <laughs> letters you got, the more money. You got. Yeah, I don't. I don't speak Latin. I uh, fix. I fix helicopters, not people. Wow. Um, are we about done? Yeah. Um, tell us. Tripping. Tell us your um your handle for your um craft. If somebody friend, wanted to check you out, at I am by Faye F A Y E on Instagram and Facebook. Okay, and I saw one more page that you had. You you have fa fascination about cars. Oh yeah, <laughs> I saw that. And I'm like, you know, my favorite color is red. So when I saw that red, I'm Same. like, I like that. <laughs> oh, you spot me out the window. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you have that page. Uh, yes, hers. at Hemi hers, Hemi underscore hers. My husband is Hemi underscore he is. We got a scat pack in the Durango, so we wow. like Mopar, Mopar family. That's so cute. <laughs> And um, you didn't tell us how could anybody reach y'all if, yeah, you, you're about to take I out your card. So we have card. a, I don't remember but we much. have a, we I have a station, uh, we have a station Instagram page that kind of covers everybody and it has the individual recruiter Instagrams up there. Um, it's at Cedar Hill Army Recruiters. Okay. Um, and I'll make sure I leave a business card and stuff so you can type it out because it's got mm -hmm. fancy underscores and stuff. But um, and we all have a direct line, but the office line is up there. We we always race to see who can answer the phone first. So you're gonna get one of us because y'all are <laughs> super cool and y'all super fun. So the I don't see why is anybody. Like, this, this is y'all definitely vibe have to come and, and find. Energy. If you want to go to the army, y'all have to come and find these two individuals. Because yes. 
they're they're gonna look out for your best interest, okay, Absolutely. and answer all your questions, okay. They ain't gotta look hard for me. They they can call me directly. Okay, what's your you number? Know, you know my your, petty bill. Your, you know what I'm saying? Big presence, my big presence. My big presence. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, six eight two two nine zero nine one five two. Awesome. So they can Thank call me you. directly on that number or shoot me a text and uh yeah, we'll see what we can do. Okay, cool. Oh, man, Thank hey, you man. so Thank much. Thank you guys for coming on Boss Talk One O One where the bosses talk. And uh, we just appreciate you guys. We thank you. Uh, we love you. We love you. And um, if you ever need us to shout out anything, do anything, we're here. If there's some kids that need help, we're here. We've been closing kids forever. I've been here 16 years at this location. So, you know, we just here. And uh, God, he's the one that's got us here. And we're just here to help. So, and we thank you guys. Like I said, you guys, we, we this is the first time we had something like this on the show. So mm -hmm. you made it happen. You are my, he, I, I, I look up to you. I appreciate you, that. Yeah, because you, yeah. I and I can tell how you, I definitely look up to you after I learned you get, you know, you got that, that whole, <laughs> that whole fighting thing down, you know. <laughs> Thank you guys so much, man. Hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we are.